In this last section, I just want to share some thoughts about transitioning to SysML v2. Some of those transition considerations are first, really important, is to understand and communicate both the benefits and the risks of transition. You need to set expectations. This is not a simple transition. Um, it's not like going from uh, a version X of a tool to a version Y of a tool. Uh, this will impact your practices, your tools, and your training. And so you, it, that needs to be understood and you need to plan for that. You also should plan for coexistence between SysML v1 models and tools and SysML v2 models and tools. They're going to be around, v1 models and tools will be around for a while. But I think it's really important to leverage this as an opportunity to substantially improve your modeling practices and the quality of your models. This really is an, uh, an important opportunity to improve our overall practice of system engineering and bring more rigor to our practice. I think it's important to integrate this effort with existing initiatives such as digital engineering and MBSE initiatives. The last thing organizations and for that matter people want is another initiative. It just adds burden to them. So fold this into your existing initiatives and make it part of your improvement effort. Take an incremental approach. It's a big step. So you need to take this uh, in, in increments. And collaborate with your tool vendors. This is a real opportunity to, as they involved, to get involved in the early development of their tools, which is going on as we speak, and to uh, have conversations with them, understand their roadmaps, and ideally provide feedback to them in this early stage of development. I'll mention that the uh, Department of Defense, the Office of Digital Engineering Modeling and Simulation, uh, is developing transition guidance uh, that they are making broadly available. So that should be very, very helpful. Uh, they've developed uh, frequently asked questions, uh, a template for uh, transition planning, uh, some conver model conversion guidance, and, and other uh, really critical information that will help you in the transition. This is a high-level view of that transition process where you start by establishing this transition team with the right expertise, the right representation, making it part of your existing initiatives, developing the, the, the strategy and incremental plan, conducting pilots. I think that's a really critical part of your transition process. Updating your overall modeling infrastructure, your guidelines, your reference methodology, your tools, training, etc. And then carefully deploying this to programs, again in an incremental fashion. Selecting which programs are ready and at the right time when to deploy this capability to a program. Typically at the start of a new program or perhaps at the start of a major upgrade. And again, do this strategy uh, incrementally, learn as you go, and feed this back. Uh, provide this feedback loop so you can do incremental updates as, as you move through this process. Relative to model conversion, if you have an existing SysML v1 model and you're going to uh, convert it to a SysML v2 model, a part of this will be automated, should be automated. The tool vendors should provide uh, a conversion capability, uh, but part of it will be manual. Again, this is the opportunity to improve the quality of that SysML v1 model. So you see on the bottom here this figure with a v1 model coming in, you go through this conversion process, you end up with the v2 model, you see both the textual and graphical syntax uh, uh, shown uh, on the right side here. But the you know, again, you want to perform the conversion incrementally. Probably don't want to do it in one big bang. Select a portion of the model to convert. 
pre-process it as required, and there is guidance in that transition guidance that I mentioned that talks about what's involved in pre-processing. Perform the transformation. This may be an automated part of the process where you transform your V1 model to your V2 model, but validate that it's correct. But then there's an opportunity to reorganize that model and refactor it so that you can get the full benefit of V2. And that's where a lot of the manual, additional manual effort may be required. So this is just uh, setting expectations. If you have your V1 model and you want to reuse it, you can go through this conversion process, do it carefully. Uh, alternatively, you may have the opportunity to start from scratch if you feel the V1 model is maybe it, it's not worth the investment in doing the conversion. It's better to just start over, but you can still leverage the V1 model as an information source.